The Federal Reserve continuing to feel heat from Capitol Hill. A bipartisan group of House lawmakers has written a letter to President Obama urging his administration to investigate the Fed, expressing concerns about giving it sweeping new regulatory powers. Republican Scott Garrett of New Jersey is one of the congressmen who signed the letter, and he joins us now from Capitol Hill. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Congressman. I'm reading the letter, and one of the complaints, it says, while Chairman Bernanke testified that he made no such threats in relation to the merger, um, there is a considerable amount of testimony and evidence that calls that into question. We're, of course, talking about Bank of America and Merrill Lynch. Um, you're doubting what he said in testimony, basically, is what that means. No, we're just saying that we want to have all the facts come forward. And as you know, the... Uh the relevant committee here that was already looking in the, into this was the government oversight. And as you well know as well, there had his testimony and there was other testimony. And so before we take the next step, and this was your opening comment, I believe, before we take the next step that the Obama administration wants to do, which is to give the Federal Reserve broad, new, sweeping powers, should we just take a second and see exactly what they did with the existing powers that they already have? That's simple. But, I mean, there, there have been a number of hearings and already a lot of investigating. What is it that you want to look into further that you haven't heard already? Well, I think uh, that's, a, that's a good point, but it's, uh, it's been fairly narrow that they've been doing, and it's a congressional-led investigation. We're just suggesting that it's the administration, President Obama, that is the one that is coming to Congress right now with uh, the Geithner proposal, I guess we'll call it, as far as giving them the brand-new sweeping authority. So we're, we're suggesting that maybe the administration should go and take the initiative here. And that's why we have a bipartisan uh, letter going to the administration suggesting that they should take some of the initiative now and to get to the bottom of all of these things. Deal with the point that you raise as far as it's a he, it's a he said, she said sort of situation. Can we get this re resolved before we go to the next step and say we're going to give you all these new authorities to give um, expansive new powers as far as the regulation, expansive new powers and, and that they don't that they've used but ne ne not necessarily set out as far as fiscal policy. Yeah, it, it sounds like you think that the Fed is already as powerful as it needs to be, yeah. perhaps. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty true. In fact, I would yeah. say they're already too powerful, and that's why in the GOP plan that I helped work on, we try to draw some rings around and tries to constrain them to where the Federal Reserve originally was intended. That's monetary policy. Let's get them out of entirely of the uh, fiscal policy side of the equation. Okay. I mean, there are a lot of people that feel that way, but do you think that during this whole crisis there wasn't enough oversight in general on the financial system? And where I'm going with that, obviously, of course, is if yeah. you don't think the Fed's power should be expanded, um, for better oversight and regulation of the financial system. Is there someone else that you'd like to see out there doing more regulation? Oh, oh sure. We've always said all along that uh, we've gone through this crisis, and the crisis has shown that there is a need for reform. Uh, we're not th those who are just saying, just keep the status quo entirely. No, and we've rolled out, I guess it's one, two, maybe three Thursdays ago now, that the Republican Party has thrown out our plan, and it's pretty uh, specific as areas of consumer protection uh, with regard to the Fed that we're talking about here right now, um, a, to deal with the wind-down authority as well, so we're not in a situation where any, par any party, the Fed or the Treasury, has to deal with this on a weekend situation, as it's known in the past, have wind-down authority. So we've been pretty specific in our proposals how to deal with each area and as far as the reform that's necessary. Has the Fed become too political? Um, I think the Fed has probably always been political from day one. They would like to deny that. They'd like to say that, we're always, that they're always hands-off and the government is not there. But I think you, if you look over hi historically, and you remember the fact that the Fed... Uh, position is one that gets reappointed by a political institution, the executive, every four years. And it's going to be in just uh, a few months from now, in January, it's going to be up for a reappointment again as this term ends. So it's always pol political, but there's no transparency. There's no accountability there. Okay, Scott Garrett, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thanks we so much. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right.